What is up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. And so today's video is super exciting because today we are going to be talking about legacy applicants for college admissions, what it is and what it means. So if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Rachel. I graduated from UC Berkeley in the class of 2020 where I double majored in cognitive science and legal studies. And currently I'm working full time at a law firm and this past admission cycle I was an ex undergraduate admissions reader with UC Berkeley. So if you're an incoming college student or a student applying to colleges soon, definitely check out Study Hall College Consulting. It's a team of myself and other UC Berkeley grads who specialize in reviewing college application essays as well as consulting one-on-one -on -one with students and parents. So check out our website and social media for even more tips and tricks. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So first up, let's talk about legacy. What does it mean? And for all of the sites that I used to create this video, I'll have those articles linked down below if you wanted to read them on your own. So legacy applicants are defined as those who have familial ties to an institution, which could include parents attended and or graduated from the institution to which the student is applying. There are two kinds of legacy. There is the primary legacy and then the secondary legacy. For primary legacy, this is the direct connection, so like your parents attending that institution, and typically for these colleges, having that primary legacy would give you a major boost in the college application process versus the secondary legacy is a looser connection. So it's like an aunt, a grandparent, a sibling who maybe attended that university where secondary legacy would also be helpful, but usually less so than the primary legacy status. And so for these colleges that use legacy, they would ask you questions like, do you have any relatives attending? Where did your parents go to school? Do you have any siblings, cousins, grandparents who have attended this university? yes or no, explaining your relationship. So then through the Common App answering these questions, they would know, hey, do you have legacy or not? So that was a little bit of background information. What is the definition of legacy? Now I'm going to talk a little bit about some stats related to legacy applicants. So there was a study led by an economist at Duke University where they found that legacy applicants had an admit rate of 34% across six consecutive admission cycles at Harvard, compared to the roughly 6% admit rate for non-legacy students. And even as this study shows, just being a legacy doesn't guarantee your admission, but as seen here, more than two-thirds of the legacy applicants still were not admitted into Harvard, despite their legacy connections. Another study that studied 30 elite colleges, they found that prior primary legacy applicants are 45% more likely to be admitted into that highly selective college or university over a non-legacy student. They also found that the secondary legacy applicants had less of an advantage with only a 13%. In the admissions world, people like to say and equate that having a legacy status is like having a 160 point gain on your SAT score. On the SAT scale out of 1600, say you scored a 1400 on your SAT, but you have that legacy status, they're saying that would equivalent to getting a 1560 on your SAT after that 160 point boost. So I found these stats interesting. I feel like they're not really talked about a lot in terms of college admissions or anything. And even for these colleges that use legacy, they don't always necessarily publicize the facts or the percentages of these legacy students. So it was interesting what this research uncovered. So now let's talk a little bit about which schools use legacy in their application process. So it is estimated that three quarters of the top 100 research 
institutions and liberal arts colleges in the United States factor legacy status into their admissions decisions. So legacy is typically used in schools like the Ivy League, as well as other top elite universities. But there are some differences between schools that use legacy and how they use legacy, so definitely if you're interested in certain colleges, Google it and see how they're using legacy in their admissions. So for example, colleges like Stanford and UNC, they only consider primary legacy into consideration, so that's the direct familial connection, your parents going to that university. They're not taking that secondary connection, your grandparent, cousin, sibling. And then this article also states that interestingly, a lot of elite universities also grant much higher consideration to the parent who attended their undergraduate years at that school versus doing a graduate program at that school. So that's one example of how legacy differs between colleges. Another example of how legacy differs is for schools like UPenn and Cornell. They only consider legacy status in the early action and early decision rounds. Basically saying for early decision, you have to come and attend and our university if accepted, and so because you're applying early decision, then we'll take your legacy into consideration. And then on the other hand, not all colleges use legacy in their application process. For example, the University of California system, the UCs, so like UC Berkeley, UCLA, UC Davis, they do not take legacy into account when applying. So as you can see, legacy status, they may be used for some colleges, they might not be used for other colleges, so when you're creating your school list or applying, you definitely have to do some research there if you really, really care about what schools do legacy or don't. So now going a little bit into why some colleges say that they use legacy and the reasons behind why they want to use legacy. So publicly, institutions typically defend legacy admissions as a way to respect tradition and acknowledge those who helped lay the foundation on which the university is built. Intergenerational continuity is a term that has been thrown around by defenders of the practice. Some other reasons why colleges say that they use legacy include caring about alumni engagement, basically saying that if you're admitting qualified students of the alumni, then they're more likely to donate, which some studies has found is actually not the case. Another reason colleges give for using legacy is about protecting their yield. They're saying that these legacy students are more likely to attend their university, so if accepted, that will help their yield go down. So finally, let's talk about what some critics say about legacy admissions, as well as some takeaways. What can you learn from this video? Critics say that they don't like legacy because it caters towards children of people who are already privileged privileged, and that it harms the equity in the college admissions process. And so I think this really goes to show that the college admissions process isn't necessarily all about merit. So with the college admissions process, it's not always, oh, the best students are going to get into this university. Like my two recent videos, one about institutional priorities and the other about holistic review and admissions, legacy definitely falls into that institutional priorities category where colleges specifically set out, hey, this is a priority we have for this college. We want to admit the children of people who have come to our school. So I'll link those two videos down below. I think all of these topics go hand in hand, so definitely check those out if you're interested. And I think another big takeaway is that applying as a legacy won't really matter, you know, if your grades test scores, essays, and overall application are not up to the university's admissions standards. Unless you know you're paying your way into these schools or your parents are super duper rich and they're buying buildings or donating millions and billions of dollars to the school. And I have a video talking about the college admission scandal, which I'll also link down below. But yeah, that is a little bit about legacy in admissions, what it means, and some stats and research behind 
behind it. If you have any questions, definitely leave a comment down below. If you have any videos that you want to see me do, also leave a comment. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Thank you.